So, hey, everybody, I got Andrew Henderson here. He's got Nomad Capitalists, and, and he has successfully reduced his tax rate legally from 43% down to 1% by buying properties in, in other countries. He, he has uh, lots of websites, the five most valuable passports for visa-free travel, the 12 second residence permits that you can uh, get with this a single bank deposit and fastest uh, country to get citizenships. So all kinds of stuff around uh, moving out of the country or moving your wealth into another country, having uh, citizenship somewhere else. Andrew, welcome. Welcome to Ken McElroy Show. Great to be back with you. So let's talk about the wealth tax. Obviously, it's a huge topic in America, especially now with the debt and the pandemic on our shoulders. Um, you, you know, let's let's chat about how the different countries treat wealth tax differently or treat wealth differently and how they tax wealth. Can you walk through the, to the listeners what wealth tax is and how it's different from an income tax? Well, I think we've written close to 2,000 articles over the last eight years. I've made well over 1,000 videos, put a book. And in all that time, I think I've never seen so much of a, of a hyped tax as I see right now with the wealth tax. Not only in the U.S., I see the U.K. has been pushing it big time. I see talk in Canada, Australia, even New Zealand, which is supposed to be the tax friendliest of all these little places. Uh, and so what is a wealth tax? It is uh, the politicians in the what I call legacy brand countries who have decided uh, we don't need to be competitive anymore. People are just going to come here because, uh, as Gavin Newsom said, where else are you going to go? There's not a thousand places in the world with beaches. There's not a two thousand places with girls in bikinis sitting at a beach bar. You can't go anywhere else. You're stuck with Gavin. And so what they're deciding to do, not only on a national level, but in some of the states like California, Massachusetts, et cetera, is say every year we're going to go through and we're going to try and calculate your wealth. Now, the issue with this, which is why so many countries abandon it in Europe, there's only three or four left out of a dozen or so at the turn of the century, uh, is what is wealth? Is it cryptocurrency? Is it money? Okay, of course, it's money in the bank. I guess it's cryptocurrency if they if they you know know that it exists. I'm all for, as you said, legally. We have to do it legally. So I guess they know your crypto exists. Art, uh, cars, I mean, home equity. I don't know. In the UK, they were saying half a million pounds. That's not a lot. I mean, basically, if you own a paid-for broom closet in London, you're now on the hook to hand over 5% of your wealth. And so the numbers have ranged, I guess, anywhere from 1% or 2%. Elizabeth Warren says 2 to 3%. Uh, South Africa proposed 7% a year. Um, one guy proposed that. So basically, every year, you just add up whatever you have, according to God knows what standard, uh, and uh, you send them a check every year. And the idea is that eventually they will transfer your wealth from you know you the evil rich, like you nasty people. And they'll try to get, you know, Elizabeth Warren will get her mitts in there and move it around a little bit and she'll pass it on so other people have opportunities because your children should be able to inherit what you have. So I guess if you're on the South African system, about 15 years, you'll be broke uh, with these zero interest rates. So, you know, that's what it is. So what do you think, what, what kind of, what, what part does culture have in creating some of these wealth taxes, in your opinion? Well, uh, I, I mean, 1995, 1996, my father told me uh, by happenstance what I've now turned into my five magic words, go where you're treated best. He realized back then the United States where I'm from probably won't always be the best place for entrepreneurs. I was 11 or 12. I wanted to be an entrepreneur pretty early. And he said, you know, even if it's another country, go where you're treated best. And I think he saw the writing on the wall that has become correct. Politicians. Uh, in a country where more and more jobs, people like me, I have about 40 people who work for me. We're going to be at 50 very soon. I don't have a single person working for me in the U.S. It's not competitive. And so what the politicians now have the ability to say is, we've got to tax these nasty rich people who live in our country because they're not creating opportunities. Well, what really has happened over the last 20 years, even Republicans like Steve Bannon have admitted this, you built a middle class in places like Asia, in places like Eastern Europe. They are coming up. And so guys like me can now go and with a lot more risk and you know all that uh go in and hire and create value and so as as wages in the u.s are stagnant the culture has been who are we gonna, who are we going to blame you know you ever read the uh, uh how to win friends and influence people people aren't going to blame themselves mass murderers don't blame themselves you read the first chapter of the book the guy on death row he doesn't blame himself do you think people blame themselves for their economic position no so the situation now is in cultures where 
they were once high on the hog. You know, I lived, I, I, I graduated high school in Avon Lake, Ohio, and there were various plants in Avon Lake and Sheffield Lake that have become far less productive because there are better places to run those plants. But there was a time in Avon Lake, Ohio, where all you had to do was finish Avon Lake High School and show up sober at the plant. And you had a great job. You had a pension that took care of you for life. And that's gone now because, you know, nasty guys like us like competition. And so we're going where we're treated best. And so, uh, you know, politicians in these cultures are blaming it. You know, how, why don't we just get to have a $60,000 a year job for showing up sober and sweeping a floor? <laughs> so, so you kind of touched on uh, these wealth taxes and how they haven't worked in other countries. Can you, can you talk about how they were and now they're not and, and, and why you see them kind of coming and going? Well, I mean, a lot of European countries have had wealth taxes over the years. Um, the one that I most work with now is I have a lot of people who want to leave their country and live overseas in Spain as a place that a lot of people feel familiar with. They want to go live in Spain, except Spain has a wealth tax. Spain's government, and really Spain as a country, is extremely inefficient. I went to a, uh, a bar once with some friends of mine about five years ago in Valencia. It's at the end of the month, and they said, sorry, we're fresh out of uh, alcohol. We didn't pay the liquor supplier, so you can't have any wine. But as inefficient as that is, a bar with no wine, the government in Spain is excellent at collecting their tax, their high income taxes and their wealth tax. They're really one of the only ones left, quite frankly. You've had a lot of countries, I can't even keep track of them all, I guess sweet Denmark, places like that, where they've said, this is too difficult. And what they also learned in places like France was you can move from France a couple miles over the border into Belgium, where part of Belgium, they speak French, and it's not that difficult. Now, here's the rub if you're an American. When Elizabeth Warren was asked about this, I think it was on CNBC, she said, huh, you don't understand our system. This is what I talk about because I'm the nomad capitalist. She said, the U.S. system, we're the only system in the world, basically, besides an African dictatorship, where we have extraterritorial taxation. We tax our citizens worldwide. So if you go and live in Europe, if you go and live in Asia, you may get an, ex an exclusion on some of your income. You may get tax credits. You may get you know, write down. You can move overseas and pay a lot less, but you're never going to be free of the IRS until you give up your U.S. citizenship. And so most people don't want to do that. A good friend of mine came out today and said he thinks even with record high numbers of people expatriating, they're actually lying and they're suppressing it. I don't know about that. But how many people are going to renounce their citizenship? I did, uh, and not really for that reason. But you know that is the rub if you're an American, is they can follow you with this wealth tax anywhere. And so I think that the reasons why it failed in many of these European countries was you have this freedom of movement within Europe that you don't have in the U.S., you know, even California said our state wealth tax, we're going to follow you for 10 years. Heck, we're going to follow non-Americans for 10 years and try and figure out what percentage of their wealth was generated from California and then send them a bill. So if you're a guy from Dubai who comes and spends a long summer in L.A. for 10 years, they're going to try and get their their cut. That was the proposal. So, um, you know, there's a very isolated view in the United States, in my opinion, to someone who's been all over the world that uh, you can't escape. And I think that's what could make the U.S. much more deadly. I think other countries like Canada have discussed similar extra tor uh, territorial taxation to where they would do the same thing to people in the future. So that is a trend that I think could happen in Western countries. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. Uh, now we're going to jump over to the premium site again, Andrew at KenMacroy.com uh, slash premium. And we're going to we're going to talk to Andrew about, uh, you know, some of the most tax friendly countries Andrew, thank you. Uh, lots of knowledge here, guys. Do not try to do this on your own. I don't know if you just heard him in the last two minutes, but there's a 20 years plus probably of knowledge right there just in things that, that he's figured out over time. Uh, make sure you make your way over to no Nomad Capitalists uh, and, and, and don't try to navigate this yourself. There's a lot of things uh, that you can do right and there's a lot of things you could do wrong. Uh, make sure you get the best advisors for that. Uh, Andrew, again, thank you so much for your time. Great information for for the folks. And uh, I wish you all the best. My pleasure, Kevin. All right. Cheers.